Day and purchases and uh, lots of different very exciting events. So we'll have a long uh, time together today. We'll then be having lunch. I think we're going to be seeing the media right afterwards and say a few words. But it's an honor, Mr. President, to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for our discussions. Yes. Yes. See, he's a man of few words, and he gets it done. <laughs> That's what I like. So, about. That's what I like about him. Anyway, okay. Thank you all very much. Sir, are you concerned that you are putting the whistleblower's life in danger? Well, the whistleblower was very inaccurate. The whistleblower started this whole thing by writing a report on the conversation I had with the president of Ukraine. And the conversation was perfect. It couldn't have been nicer. I saw Rick Scott. I saw many of the senators talking about it, many of the congressmen talking about it. Not a thing wrong, unless you heard the Adam Schiff version where he made up my conversation. He actually made it up. It should be criminal. It should be treasonous. He made it up, every word of it made up, and read to Congress as though I said it. And I'll tell you what. He should be forced to resign from Congress. Adam Schiff, he's a lowlife. He should be forced to resign. He took a perfect conversation, realized he couldn't read it to Congress because it was perfect. It was a very nice conversation. I knew many people were on the phone. Not only were many people on the phone, we had stenographers on the phone taking it down word for word. He took that conversation, which was perfect. He said, I can't read this. So he made up a conversation and he reported it and, and said it to Congress and to the American people. And it was horrible what he said. And that was supposed to be coming from me, but it was all fabricated. He should resign from office in disgrace. And frankly, he, they should look at him for treason because he is making up the words of the President of the United States. Not only words, but the meaning. And it's a disgrace. It should not be allowed to happen. But your own DNI said the call transcript was consistent with so no, 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 he didn't say that. You have to take a look. No, 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 he did not say that. And in fact, if you look at what he said, he found everything to be very normal. He's a good man, and Joe, and he found it to be very normal. I saw Schiff trying to go 15, you know, call him Shifty Schiff. We don't call him Shifty Schiff for nothing. He's a shifty, dishonest guy, who, by the way, was critical of one of the great Secretary of States, graduated, Number one in his class at West Point. Graduated top of it, one of the top in his class at Harvard Law School. The most honorable person, Mike Pompeo. And this guy was negative on Mike Pompeo. He can't, you know, there's an expression. He couldn't carry his blank strap. I won't say it because they'll say it was so terrible to say. But that guy couldn't carry his blank strap. Do you understand that? So you deal with bad people and you know, I watched China over the last few days, and I watched some of these other countries build up, build up, build up, and we built up more than any of them because of me. But no help due to the Democrats. They're a disaster. They're the do-nothing Democrats. They don't do any work. All they want to do is try and win the election in 2020. So they come up with this impeachment nonsense, and everyone knows. The conversation, all based on one phone call that I had, where I'm talking to the president of Ukraine, You'll hear from our ambassadors, you'll hear from some of the folks that know all about the call, why the call was set up, and everything else. It's perfect. The call was perfect. In fact, Lindsey Graham said, I didn't know you could be so nice. There was no quid pro quo. Remember before they said, the only reason I put that out, and I did it with the approval of Ukraine, by the way, otherwise I couldn't have done it, was because the whistleblower was so dishonest. The whistleblower said terrible things about the call, but he then, I then found out he was second-hand and third-hand. In other words, he didn't know what was on the call. No, these are bad people. These are dishonest people. And when the American people find out what happened, it's going to be a great day. And you know what? We have to go back to building our country. Because 99% of Nancy Pelosi's time is spent on this. She should worry about lowering the price of drugs, which I've done. But it's hard to do it without the help of Congress. About creating border security, which I've done. We've built, we now have hundreds of miles of wall under construction. 
on the southern border. She should worry about infrastructure. She should worry about the USMCA. She's not doing it. I just saw a part of a press conference before the president came. I'm sorry to bother you with this, Mr. President, because we have other things to talk about. But I will tell you, I just watched part. She says, oh, drug prices. Well, she's been trying to get drug prices down for how long has she been in Congress? For years. She should focus on her own district. Do you see what's happening to her district? We call it tent city. It's terrible. In fact, we just sent a violation to the city of San Francisco. Unsafe water, unsafe conditions, environmental. EPA, our EPA, which is doing a great job, is sending Nancy Pelosi, with all the talk about EPA, there's needles and drugs all over the street, there's tents, there's people that are dying in squalor in the best location in San Francisco. It used to be a great city. Now you have to see what's happened to San Francisco. You happen to see what, what's, what the Democrats have allowed to happen. As an example, what they've allowed to happen, just take a look, to Los Angeles, great cities. One other thing. Yesterday, as you know, I was sued by the governor, Gavin Newsom. He's another beauty. I was sued by him. He's a do-nothing. Uh, sued by him so that I can't get on the ballot in the state of California. It was a massive story. It was the biggest story, Mr. President. It was headlines all over the place. Trump gets sued by this uh, do-nothing governor in California. It was big. Here's what happened. Yesterday, I won the case, very convincingly. A very tough, smart, highly respected judge, not a Trump person at all, not appointed by Trump, appointed by somebody that you would call the opposition, came out with a scathing and tough opinion. I won the case. I didn't see one story that I won that case. Not one story. From the fake news. I didn't see Steve write it. I didn't see you write it. I didn't see anybody write it. So let me just tell you, just to finish, Nancy Pelosi and Shifty Shift, uh, who should resign for, uh, in disgrace, by the way, and Jerry Nadler and all of them. It's a disgrace what's going on. And we should be focused on making America great again and keeping America great, because that's what we have to do. And when I look at that parade with military and millions of people and everything else, we better get smart. We better start focusing on the right things. Because what they did with this nonsense, think of it, you have a perfect, I mean, perfect conversation with a president of another country, Ukraine in this case. And they try and say, oh, let's impeach him. They've been trying to impeach me from the day I got elected. I've been going through this for three years. They've been trying to impeach me from the day I got elected. And you know what? They failed. And this is the easiest one of all, because this one is based on one conversation. What about Obama's conversation with the president of Russia where he says, hey, hey, tell that Vlad, I'll, I'll talk to him after the election's over. I'll talk to him. Nobody reports that, right? That stuff you should report. But you people should be ashamed of yourself. We have the most dishonest media that you can imagine, and you should be ashamed of yourselves. Okay, I think I've answered most of your questions. What well, do you think? Finnish yes? media here, Finland is the happiest country in the world. Finland is a happy what, country. What can you learn? What can you learn from Finland? Uh, from well, if you got rid of Pelosi and you we got rid of Shifty Shift. We about that. Sh Finland is a happy country. He's a happy leader, too. <laughs> no Republicans have raised concerns. The I don't care. That, look, I think a whistleblower should be protected if the whistleblower is legitimate. But when the whistleblower makes a big report on the conversation I had with a president of Ukraine, and it was a great conversation. It was per we talked mostly about it. congratulations on your win. We talked about corruption, and we're really referring mostly to 2016, because what the Democrats did in 2016 was corrupt. And let's see what happens. They're more concerned with that than they are with me and impeachment. They're, they're trying to hide what maybe is coming. I let our great, uh, if, you, if you look, I let our great law enforcement take care of it, okay? Attorney General Barr, 
I guess is working on it, and I hope he's working on it, because what happened in 2016 is a disgrace to this country. And they're more worried about that, because they know they're guilty as hell, all right? They're much more worried about that. Is a whistleblower immediately illegitimate if they are reporting misconduct? When a whistleblower, okay, are you ready? I heard the whistleblower's report from you people and how bad it was about just a simple conversation. By the way, this whole thing revolves around a simple, simple conversation. And if you remember at the beginning, it was quid pro quo. That's all you heard about. And I think he said seven or eight times quid pro In other words, you're going to do that or we're not going to give you money. You're going to do this or we're not going to. I never said it. But when I heard these horrible stories come out, I had no choice but to release a conversation, which I hate to do, and I hope I don't have to do it again, with the leader of a country. I asked a certain person to call up a certain person in that country to get permission to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And if I didn't do it, and I appreciate Ukraine for allowing us to release the conversation, but it was so innocent, it didn't hurt them. If anything, it helped them, because it was a very innocent conversation. But when a whistleblower takes that very nice, innocent, Lindsey Graham said, I never knew you were that nice a person. He said, you never asked him for anything. You were really, really nice. Lindsey was saying, I never knew you were so nice. That was a perfect conversation. I heard Rick Scott today say that was a perfect conversation. How can they impeach him on that conversation? He read it. He's a very smart guy from Florida, Rick Scott. And he said, that was a perfect conversation. How can you impeach somebody on that conversation? But. The whistleblower wrote not that conversation. He wrote a vicious conversation. In other words, he either got it totally wrong, made it up, or the person giving the information to the whistleblower was dishonest. And this country has to find out who that person was, because that person's a spy, in my opinion. You ready? So when a whistleblower, purposely or not, gives something that's totally erroneous. Now, here's where I fooled him. They never thought I'd release the conversation. They never thought in a million years that I'd release the conversation. When little Adam Schiff saw the, the text, when he read it, he couldn't believe it. When Nancy Pelosi, who worked a day early, Nancy Pelosi called for essentially impeachment, let's impeach the president, before she saw the transcript, and this is an exact word-for-word -word transcript of the conversation, right? Well, well, Taken by very talented stenographers. Listen to me. So when she saw that, she was, she, I heard, she went crazy. She said, we can't impeach him of this conversation. That's a great conversation. She went by the whistleblower. And the whistleblower was so bad, I wouldn't even think about it. But here's what happened. The whistleblower was wrong. The only thing that matters is the transcript of the actual conversation that I had with the president of Ukraine. It was perfect. We're looking at congratulations. We're looking at doing things together. And what are we looking at? We're looking at corruption. And in, I believe, 1999, there was a corruption act or a corruption bill passed between both and signed between both countries where I have a duty to report corruption. And let me tell you something. Biden's son is corrupt, and Biden is corrupt. And I'd rather run against Biden than almost any of those candidates, and I think they're all weak. But I think Biden has never been a smart guy, and he's less smart now than he ever was. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, will you release the transcript of the Thank you. Call, sir? Thank you. Uh, uh, let, let me do that again. Uh, it's a fair question. So this morning and last night, my comms people came to me. Listen to this one, President. I'm glad they're interested in Finland, but what can you do? <laughs> I, I'm interested in Finland much more. But my comms people came to me and they said, sir, there's a book or something being written. It's written by Washington Post people, so you know it's inaccurate. You know it's probably a fraud. So two reporters of the Washington and they said, President Trump started screaming, ranting, and raving that on the southern border, where we are right now building a tremendous wall, it's unbelievable what's going on. Army Corps of Engineers, it's, we're doing a lot. We have, we'll soon have over 100 miles under construction completed. We're going to end up with 400 to 500 miles. Okay, ready? That I wanted a wall, but I wanted a moat. A moat, whatever that is. Not a word I used, but they used it. A moat. 
And in the moat, I wanted alligators and snakes. And I wanted the wall to be a fence, and I wanted it to be electrified. And I wanted sharp spikes at the top, so if anyone gets it, it, it goes piercing through their skin, is somewhat the way they said it. Skin-piercing spikes. But I want that whole wall to be electrocuted. And, sir, you never said that. They came to me, the comms people. They came to me yesterday, and they said, did you say this? I said, why are you asking that stupid question? Because the fake news media is saying that you said this in a book. I said, what book? And they said, Washington Post. They said, well, obviously it's fake, because almost everything the Washington Post does is fake. It's a fake newspaper. It's owned by a rich guy for the purposes of giving him power uh, in Washington. It's really, I mean, it's a lobbyist. I call it the lobbyist Washington Post for Amazon, and he ought to be ashamed of himself, because what they do to his reputation, I think maybe it's probably no good anyway, but what they do to his reputation with the Washington Post is a disgrace. So these two reporters wrote this book, and they said, I want a moat with alligator snakes, electrified fences, so people get electrocuted if they so much as touch the fence, and spikes on top. Never said it. Never